Welcome to First Presbyterian Church of Gallatin. We're excited that each of you are here today. And uh, just so we know who's in attendance, be sure to fill out the uh, pads in your, your rows of registration pads. We appreciate that. A few announcements. First of all, a big round of applause for all the volunteers that worked Square Fest yesterday. We raised $1,100 in the parking lot for Habitat for Humanity, so that was wonderful. Um, we have a Wednesday night together this Wednesday. There's a flyer in your bulletin. Um, reminder that Pastor Mike is going to be leading a Bible study on Ruth. Dinner starts at 5.30 and the Bible start, study starts at 6 o'clock and we hope that you will join us. Today is a fifth Sunday. What does that mean for us? Um, we call this sensibility. We'll be collecting an offering. Uh, you can either put it uh, in the offering or you can put it in our jar up here as you leave or even that in the last hymn if you, if you like uh, but we will uh, that offering will be going to support our local Meals on Wheels and also uh, the Presbyterian Hunger Program. This Friday May 5th uh, we'll be having a memorial service for Dr. Jimmy Patterson. Um, we Saturday the 6th how did I miss that? Okay, sorry. <laughs> uh, we'll be having a service this Saturday. Uh, the service will be at 2 o'clock and uh, the visitation from 1 to 2 in the sanctuary. And if you, uh, we are not doing a meal afterwards for the family, uh, but if you want to contribute food to the family, uh, please see Betty Jo. Your name was given to me. <laughs> Um, and you may provide some food that can be delivered. She'll give you instructions uh, to, uh, to their home. So hope that each of you can come out and uh, help us recognize the life of Jimmy Patterson. And then we want to recognize our newest member, Tom Tussle, uh, as we go in. Yeah. As we go into passing the peace, just be sure you go around and welcome him as a new member of our congregation. Is there a minute for mission today? Um, I think you've sort of given them all. It's good. Thanks. Okay. <laughs> good job. All right. New life takes shape in a community where people know that God loves and accepts us in spite of who we are and what we have done. So we accept ourselves and love others, knowing that no one has any ground on which to, say, to stand except God's grace. The peace and love of Christ be with you. Go past the peace. Oh, no, you don't like that. <laughs> the reason the people get the flu is not because they shake hands, it's because they don't. 
wash. Yeah, but you got it. <laughs> You may stay seated for our call to worship. Oh, you changed it. Well, there's my second mistake. Worship committee changed. Okay, please rise for our call to worship. A soft answer turns away wrath.
but a harsh word stirs up anger. A gentle tongue is a tree of life, but perverseness in it breaks the spirit. O Lord, who may, ab who may abide in your tent? Who may dwell on your holy hill? Those who walk like you and do what is right, and speak the truth from their heart, who do not slander with their tongue. Jesus said, Neither do I condemn you. Go your way, and from now on do not sin again. For there is no distinction since all of us have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. They are now justified by his grace as a gift through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Let us worship God. Our opening hymn is hymn number 59, Joyful, Joyful, We Adore Thee. reconciling act of God in Christ exposes the evil in us as sin in the sight of God. In sin, we claim mastery of our own lives, turn against God and neighbors, and become exploiters and despoilers of the world. In Jesus Christ, God was reconciling the world to himself. Please join me in this morning's prayer of confession. Let us pray. O oh God, we know that wise and virtuous men and women throughout the ages have sought the highest good in devotion to freedom, justice, peace, truth, and beauty. In all human virtue, when seen in the light of your love, Jesus Christ is found to be infected a self-interest and hostility. All people are in the wrong before you and helpless without your forgiveness. Thus, everyone falls under your judgment. No one is more subject to that judgment than those who assume that they are guiltless before you or morally superior to others. 
We do not love you fully. We are loving one another as you command. God of all peoples and all time, hear our prayer. Forgive us, and by your Spirit, help us to live evermore into the image. Hear the good news. Jesus Christ is our peace. In his flesh he has made us one and has broken down the dividing wall, that is, the hostility between us, reconciling us to God in one body through the cross, thus putting to death that hostility through it. So then, you are no longer strangers and aliens, but are fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God, built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets with Christ Jesus himself as the cornerstone. God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself. The risen Christ is the savior of all. All who are joined to Christ by faith are set right with God and commissioned to serve as Christ's reconciling community. Please join in the words of pardon. There is one body and one spirit, just as we are called to the one hope, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in all. In Jesus Christ we are forgiven. Thank you.
children especially because they always say either something you're supposed to talk about somebody else like I wore red boots or something uh, full of praise. Uh, let's go to God in prayer. Dear God, Dear God, thank you for loving me. Thank you for loving me. Help me love other people. Help, Help me love other people. Amen. Amen. Thank you guys. Thank you for tuning in. The one sufficient revelation of God is Jesus Christ, the Word of God incarnate, to whom God's Spirit bears unique and authoritative witness through the Holy Scriptures, received and obeyed as the Word of God written. The Scriptures are not one witness among others, but the witness without parallel, by which our faith and obedience are nourished and regulated. Listen to what God's Spirit is telling us today. Our first scripture reading today is from the book of James, chapter 3, verses 2 through 12. This can be found in your pew Bible on page 279. For all of us make many mistakes. Anyone who makes no mistakes in speaking is mature, able to keep the whole body in check with a bridle. If we put bits into the mouths of horses to make them obey us, we guide their whole bodies. Or look at ships. Though they are so large and are driven by strong winds, yet they are guided by a very small rudder wherever the will of the pilot directs. So also the tongue is a small member, yet it boasts of great exploits. How great a forest is set ablaze by such a small fire. And the tongue is a fire. The tongue is placed among our members as a world of inequity. It stains the whole body sets on fire the cycle of life, and is itself set on fire by hell. For every species of beast and bird, of reptile and sea creature, can be tamed and has been tamed by the human species. But no one can tame the tongue, a restless evil full of deadly poison. With it we bless the Lord and Father, and with it we curse people made in the likeness of God. From the same mouth comes a blessing and a curse. My brothers and sisters, this ought not to be. Does a spring pour forth from the same opening both fresh and brackish water? Can a fig tree, my brothers and sisters, yield olives or a, a grapevine figs? No more than salt water yield fresh. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you, God.
Today's second scripture is from John chapter 8, verses 2 to 11. Hear what God's Spirit is telling the church today. Early in the morning, he came again to the temple. All the people came to him, and he sat down and began to teach them. The scribes and the Pharisees brought a woman who had been caught in adultery, and making her stand before all of them, they said to him, Teacher, this woman was caught in the very act of committing adultery. Now in the law, Moses commanded us to stone such women. Now what do you say? They said this to test him so that they might have some charge to bring against him. Jesus bent down and wrote his finger on the ground. When they kept on questioning him, he straightened up and said to them, Let anyone among you who is without sin be the first to throw a stone at her. And once again, he bent down and wrote on the ground. When they heard it, they went away one by one, beginning with the elders, and Jesus was left alone with the woman standing before him. Jesus straightened up and said to her, Woman, where are they? Has no one condemned you? She said, No one, sir. And Jesus said, Neither do I condemn you. Go your way, and from now on, do not sin again. This is the word of the Lord. And we have a third scripture today. From Genesis chapter 1. Verses 1 to 3a and 31. Here again what God's Spirit is telling the church today. When God began to create the heavens and the earth, the earth was complete chaos, and darkness covered the face of the deep while the wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, and God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. This is the word of the Lord. Let us pray. Dear God, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Someone asked me last week to preach today on gossip. This is not a topic I would have picked, but... Here it goes. The monks at Gethsemane Abbey, who we will visit, by the way, on Tuesday, July the 25th, be sure to sign up, have taken a vow of silence. The extroverts among us cannot take a vow of silence. I'm one of those who cannot be silent for very long. But Jesus' brother, James, is not asking us to be speechless Trappist monks. Instead, is asking us to control our speech. He says, let our brains control us, not our tongues. But if we want our brains to control our bodies, he says, we must first control our tongues. When I was seven years old, I was invited by a friend, I, a city boy, was invited by a friend to come to a farm. And the first thing I want to do, of course, is ride that big, tall quarter horse. Now, I don't know if quarter horses are big horses or not, but it seemed big to me at age seven. Is it a big horse? Um, Anyway, um, they didn't have a saddle. So guess what happened as soon as I got on top of that quarter horse? Exactly. And uh, the impact of falling on the ground was so unexpected and forceful that my diaphragm was paralyzed for what seemed like an eternity, but was probably only for one or two seconds, but I couldn't breathe. I'm sure some, sometimes we call it having the wind knocked out of you. I'm sure some of you have experienced that before. Anyway, ever since then, at age seven, I've been very respectful of horses as being bigger than me and powerful and something that, you know, I, it's probably, I've tried, but it's probably not really my, my thing. James here talks about a metaphor, about a bit, a bridle how such a small thing that can fit in the palm of your hand can control such a huge animal. He also says that our tongues are like a small rudder on a large ship, able to control the direction of the large ship. And our tongues are like a spark of fire 
it can set an entire forest on fire. Another metaphor is sometimes when we open our mouths, rubies pop out, right? You say sweet things about somebody that makes people feel good. And sometimes, unfortunately, when we open our mouths, we can't help it. We're human beings. We all sin. Toads pop out, don't they? Yet another metaphor is that where words are like toothpaste, once toothpaste is out of the tube, we cannot put it back. Mixing metaphors for a moment, when those toads pop out of our mouths, we can't stuff them back in, can we? Surveys show that many people think gossip is lying, and since they are not lying, and they think they're telling the truth, they're not really gossiping, but Webster's Dictionary says gossip is not necessarily lying, although as damaging. Webster says gossiping is spreading, I'm quoting, spreading personal or sensational facts about a person who is not present and who therefore cannot defend herself. Furthermore, if we repeat something we deny ourselves hear or see, it's just hearsay and might not be true even though we think it is. Everyone agrees that slander and bearing false witness are lying, but surveys show many people think that as long as there's a kernel of truth, that the extra things that are repeated that did not happen are whitewashed by the kernel of truth. But that's not true, is it? You've heard that the pen is mightier than the sword. The Jewish rabbis go a step further. They say the tongue is more like an arrow than a sword. The sword can only kill face to face, but the arrow kills at a distance. Gossip is like an arrow. If you want to knock someone down a notch or two or murder the reputation, the playbook says, unless you do a hit and run and walk away, don't tell them face to face, for they might convince you or your audience that you were wrong. No, if your goal is to murder someone's reputation, don't discuss your concerns with them face to face. Don't even do a verbal hit and run. Gospel is the best way to murder someone's reputation. Gossip is the best way to murder someone's reputation. Gossip and slander break two commandments. Do not bear false witness and do not murder. A pastor at a church in a nearby county was accused 20 years ago of touching a child inappropriately. Ten years later, the child admitted he was acting out because of issues at home and the pastor was a convenient target. Destroying the pastor's reputation made the child feel important. All the apologies and retractions in the world could not save the pastor's reputation ten years later. The false accusation ended the pastor's career. 200 years before Christ, the Jewish sage Ben Sirah writes, slander has shaken many and scattered them from nation to nation. It has destroyed strong cities and overturned the houses of the great. Those who pay heed to slander will not find rest, nor will they settle down in peace. The blow of a whip raises, raises a welt. The blow of a whip raises a welt. The blow of a tongue crushes bones. Many have fallen by the edge of the sword, but not as many as have fallen because of the tongue. As you fence in your property with thorns, so make a door and a bolt for your mouth. As you lock up your silver and gold, so make balances and scales for your words. Jesus' brother James says the tongue is evil. Some of you may remember Flip Wilson. The comedian Flip Wilson used to say, the devil made me do it. Do you remember? The devil made me do it, right? The devil made me do it. When people outside the church talk about evil, they think evil is a myth or think it is a mysterious force or think it is demon possession, but people inside the church know evil exists, but is neither mysterious nor demon possession. When you join the church, you say that you renounce evil. Evil and sin are the labels Christians give to those actions that harm other people. They become sins against God only because they hurt other people. Gossip is not just a sin, it is deceitful. Pirate ships used to fly friendly flags, that is, the colors of friendly countries, right up until they are close enough to shoot their cannon. Then they lure the friendly flags and fly their true colors, a skull and crossbones. Some say that when we slander, gossip, or bear false witness, we are flying 
our true colors. Some folks outside the church say we are either all bad or all good, regardless of the colors we are flying at the moment. They say that gossips are like pirates flying friendly colors, and when the audience is smaller and they think they will not get called out for gossiping, they fly their true colors. But I disagree. Hear me now. Listen. I for, I for one disagree with the idea that gossips are evil. I think all human beings, all human beings, you, me, and everybody, even our choir, all of us are striped with good and evil. You, me, and everyone else. Although we should certainly be admonished when we gossip and certainly should be ushered away from places where gossip and our verbal toads can do harm, we should forgive those who gossip, slander, and bear false witness because all of us have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. James himself, if you look back in a minute, James himself before his rant about the evil tongue says, for all of us make many mistakes. And that's true, isn't it? All of us make many mistakes. The tongue, says James, is like a little world all its own. Ungoverned, it can be an evil country within a benevolent country. The person as a whole may be well governed by God's spirit, but within the smaller country, within a country, evil may reign unchecked. Jesus' brother James pleads for coherence and consistency. He says it is incoherent to behave and be fruitful in one breath and then slander gossip and mere false witness in the next. There are several Rotarians here, so I'm going to go ahead and say what we say every Thursday. It's a good day to be a Rotarian, right? Good day to be a Rotarian. I've asked one of our Rotarians to stand up and tell us about the four-way test. All right, Susan. Thank you. Uh, I like the Rotarian four-way test. I think we ought to put that on our, our uh, billboard, maybe. But forgiving the human being who gossips, slanders, and bears false witness does not mean we need to tolerate these behaviors. In today's gospel, the good news, Jesus tells the woman, go and sin no more. So you can tell the gossips that as for you and your family, you only want to say and hear beautiful things about other people. And you have other things to do besides listen to gossip. We all have somewhere else to go. When accosted by gossip in the parking lot, you can say you are sorry, but you have to go somewhere and then roll your window up. And if someone asks you, will you tell them the latest gossip, you can tell them that is his or her story to tell and then walk away. But let me tell you, there's an even better way. There's an even better way to stop gossip. We read about it today in the very first chapter of Genesis. I believe that how long it took for the cosmos to arrive at its current form is not as important as the main underlying message that the universe did not create itself, that God created the universe. But there is yet another deep meaning to the scripture that teaches human beings how to live. Before God speaks, there is chaos. After God speaks, creation occurs. Okay, you got that. But you ever thought that maybe even you, even you, when you speak, you can also create? When someone gives you a some sincere compliment. It builds you up, right? It creates in you a kind spirit. We are all hungry for praise, especially those who deny their need for praise. But the very best praise you can give, excuse me, the very best praise you can receive is when someone else tells you that another person is praising you behind your back. I'm hoping each of you has, remembers a time when someone came to you and said, Betsy or Susie or Johnny or somebody was saying good things about you. 
Wow, it must, they must have been sincere if they told somebody else and didn't tell me. Wow. Praise, that's praise you can believe is sincere. What a better community and world we would have if everyone sincerely praised other people, not only to their face, but also behind their back. Someone once told me that if you want to cause a positive change in someone, don't speak chaos about the other person behind his or her back. Instead, apply to him or her a reputation they will want to live up to. Everyone wants a good reputation. Remind them of a time when they made a positive contribution, although maybe for some of us, including me, maybe rarely, um, and compliment the other person both face to face and behind their back. I promise you, I promise you will behold that you created something very good out of chaos. It works. Try it today. Spring is finally here. Remember the biggest word of all from the poem, All I Really Ever Needed to Know I Learned in Kindergarten. The biggest word is look. Don't judge. Don't assume. Look. Be curious. And use your words not to destroy, but to create. To God be the glory. On the shore of the Sea of Galilee, Jesus asked his disciples, Who do people say that I am? And they said, Some say John the Baptist, but others Elijah, and still others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said to them, But who do you, who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered, You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. Please stand and say what you believe. In Jesus of Nazareth, true humanity was realized once and for all. Jesus, a Palestinian Jew, lived among his own people and shared their needs, temptations, joys, and sorrows. He expressed the love of God in word and deed and became a brother to all kinds of sinful men and women. But his complete conflict with his people, his life and teaching judged their goodness, religious aspirations, and national hopes. Many rejected him and demanded his death. In giving himself freely for them, he took upon himself the judgment under which everyone stands convicted. God raised him from the dead, vindicating him as Messiah and Lord. The victim of sin became victor, and won the victory over sin and death for all. His cross by the work of Jesus, his supreme crisis in the life of humankind. His cross and resurrection become personal crisis and present hope when the gospel is proclaimed and believed. And this experience, the Spirit brings God's forgiveness to us, moves us to respond in faith, repentance, and obedience, initiates a new life in Christ. We believe that a new life takes shape in a community in which we know that God loves and accepts us in spite of who we are. Therefore, we accept ourselves and love others, knowing that no one has any ground in which to stand except God's grace. Amen. You may be seated. My friends, a bell is not a bell until you ring it a song. It's not a song until you sing it. The love in your heart was not put there to stay. The love is not love until you give it away. So sing like no one's listening, dance like no one's watching, and give audaciously to the vetted ministries of this church. The Bible tells us the Lord loves a cheerful giver, so give joyfully.
the most needy among us can laugh again. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Let us pray. Loving, listening, ever attentive to the voices of those in need, God, we call on your name so that we might live. Now hear our prayer. For the church that bears Christ's name, that the world may know we are his disciples by the love that we have for one another. For leaders of nations and all persons in positions of authority, that their decisions may be guided by the still, small voice of your spirit. For all who are oppressed and living in captivity, that they may escape from evil and death to find the land of freedom you have promised. For those who are hungry and thirsty this day, and for those who have more than they need, that we may learn to share your generous gifts, O God. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those who are dealing with the loss or facing death, that the presence of Christ may bless and keep them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, today we specially lift up the names of these your servants. Tommy Bowes. Gene Branham, Pat Clendening, Kathy Cooper, Mac and Ann Davidson, Fred Duffer, Bud and Jean Farrell, Julia McFarlane, Evelyn McGee, the family of Dr. Jimmy Patterson, Dr. Charles Moffat, Luann Mead, Kathy Sigman, Danielle Slabinger, Michael Stewart, and Ann Thurman. Bless the ill, the lonely, and the grieving with your healing, non-anxious presence. Make us hungry for justice, strengthen our faith, and increase our love for others, especially those whom we find difficult to love. Teach us to love one another as Christ has loved us, so that everyone will know that we are his disciples. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, we pray. Amen. And now, as our Lord Jesus Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. Please stand and sing with me the hymn of discipleship. Amazing grace.
reconciled to God is to be sent into the world as God's reconciling community. We are entrusted with God's message of reconciliation, sharing the labor of healing enmities that separate people from God and from each other. Christ has called us to this mission and given us the gift of the Holy Spirit. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Thank you.